All right, guys, in this week's episode, we got some big things going on with the EV truck. Not only are we working on the pushrod suspension, but we also got a big guest coming here from the UK. So let me get out of the shop and find Andrew. Here we are about to measure motion ratios. I don't know what it is, I'm just learning. Andrew knows what it is. Andrew, yeah. what the heck is a motion ratio? Uh, motion ratio is gonna be how much wheel travel that we have versus how much coil compression that we're gonna have. Also, we need to get the front and rear weight bias as well, coupled with the motion ratio to come up with the proper spring rate. Basically what we have to do is get a measurement from our ride height of our wheel, right? For our length of our spring, which is gonna be here where this well, the shock. tube it's is. It's gonna be the shock. shock. The full shock length. Okay. So for every one inch of travel on the wheel, so we're gonna go up one inch and then we're gonna come back up and measure that shock mount to this rocker arm. That's gonna help us determine whether we have a progressive or digressive type spring rate. We're gonna take some measurements, send over that data to them, they're gonna make the calculations and then they're gonna get us the right shock length and spring rate. While we were waiting for our new coilovers to come from Viking Performance, we figured it was a great time to get back in the interior of this truck and get some of the wiring stuff and the electronic stuff all figured out. We decided to call in the big dog, the man himself, all the way from the UK, Chris Hazel. There he is. What's up, mate? What's up? One of the things that we've had to do in this truck since the get-go is use a laptop to actually turn the thing on, control the motors, all that stuff. Well, as you know, that gotta be annoying. So this man has come with a solution. So I've got a little control box and we can basically bring online the CAN bus for driving or charging mode. And I'm also gonna get all the motors set up on the software that we can do. Front end burnouts or rear end burnouts or forward burnouts. I think he just said burnouts. Yeah, he did. Lots and lots of burnouts. So I'm gonna go ahead and start plugging this guy in so we can get it functional. Chris is continuing dialing the parameters on the front motor. I got the box mounted up underneath the dash right next to our race pack smart wire. And the second half of it is going to be changing some logic in the smart wire, switching around some of the buttons. When we turn our high current battery on, it has an onboard charger on it, so it'll Output, I think it's set up to about 13.6 or 13.3 volts. You may be able to hear it close. Click clack, 13.3. So now I have a dedicated high voltage on button and I'm also gonna add another button as a dedicated charge button. So it knows when it's in charge mode. Oh yeah. Kerchoo. ka <laughs> Thanks bud. All right, so now we can put the battery pack in the charge mode. I'm gonna turn it on. Ignition on, charge mode, boop. That's it? Yeah. And then you'll hear the charger unlock. I'm just showing these guys how to tune up their Tesla motors. Down to the parameter files on both motors, which is all this gobbledygook's made a load of changes, things like throttle response, how many amps it pulls, the voltage it runs at. And what we've done is we split up front and rear motor, so one responds slightly different to the other one, just to give us sort of a bit more of a split. So we might have 40% front, 60% rear. Uh, so what we're then doing is upload the parameter file and then it goes through. So I'm going to finish getting this all set up and then hopefully these guys can get this thing on the road once I've gone back to the UK. While Andrew's got the seats out, it's a good time for me to get in here and adjust our seat height. And so this is the original seat bracket that that dude Donnie made, which was too high for me. I think it fit well for him, but he's also like four foot tall. So this is what he came up with after the fact this is what we've had in the truck and this is actually a little low for me now i need a couple more inches that's what she said these little tabs were really just welded on and it's not very substantial we're going to cut these tabs off these heavier gauge tabs are going to get welded on in place of those and then we're going to have some gussets we'll add some extra structural support i'm going to weld a sleeve through this two by two and then everything is going to be through bolted
We made our adjustments to our seat brackets. I'm feeling like I'm finally at the right height in this truck. Before I felt like a 12 year old, but now we're up at the right height. I got great view over the dash, the steering wheel. I think we're ready to go, man. We just got a package delivered from UPS and I'm pretty excited about it. So let's go check it out. We have got our new coilovers from Viking Performance. We do have to get correct hardware and probably some spacers in here, but this gives us the overall look. Like, look at that. The coilover is not assembled fully. I just did this because I was excited. information that I need for the spacer, so I'm gonna go ahead over to JC's and get these things turned out. So, let's go, man. Got my keys, got my phone. Where's my wallet? You wanna see my wallet? No, but didn't you get that new Exeter wallet that has the uh, tracker in it? Oh yeah, I did, you're right. There it is. All right guys, this week's episode is brought to you by Exeter. One of the most efficient wallets I've ever had. With one push of the button, all your cards shoot out the front of the wallet, giving you access to your credit cards and you're not fumbling around with the cash register. They have a ton of different styles and materials to choose from, from aluminum to premium leather and with over 30 different options. This wallet here is part of the Parliament collection. It holds up to 12 credit cards. It even has slots for your driver's license and your business cards. And if you're anything like me and you misplace your wallet all the time, you can add on a solar powered tracker card that will ring your wallet and show you the last place you left it. With only three hours of solar charging, this card will last up to two months inside your wallet. Now through April 12th, all you gotta do is go down to the description of the video, click the Exker link, go over to their website, and you'll get 15% off your entire order. And for our followers, we're giving away one of these space grade Esker carbon fiber hard holders. With more details under the Exker link in our description. Now I can go ahead and get over to JC's. Now I got my wallet, I got my keys. Shoot, where's my phone, man? Oh. That's a mighty big spacer, JC. You like that spacer? Yeah. Just like that. Make it till you make it. All right, there you go. Two spacers down, 12 more to go. So we got our spacers all done. It was fun. JC broke my virginity on the lathe today. It's the first time I've ever used it. He did good. He taught me. This He's guy. a natural. <laughs> Love you, bro. Thanks for having us right, out. Man. All right, so Mikey pulled the whole front suspension off the front of the EV truck because we have some modifications we have to do to the lower control arms, as you can see. The actual push rod itself was bolted on the side here. Here we go. So in order to clear the actual dry shaft or the half shaft, it has to get spaced out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sleeve this entire thing, box this all in, and then I'm also going to capture the outside here so that we get both sides of the heim joint. If we just allow one side, then there's a good chance that it could shear off. So this all has to get beefed up. So our lower control arms are all set. We got our bracing in, we got our sleeve in. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our heim. We're gonna go ahead and put it on the side here. We're gonna do the 28.8 mil spacer. And once we threw both this side, 
we'll be able to space it off like this. Be about that far probably. And then we're gonna have to figure out a way to come off the face down here on the control arm and grab the outside of this heim joint so it's completely captured on both ends. You don't want it kind of flopping in the wind otherwise there's a chance that the bolt can snap off or this thing could shear and then it could be a break, it could be an issue. Time has finally come to do the final mock-up on our push rod suspension for the EV truck. Mikey went over to JC, made some really cool washers for everything to fit into our new brackets. We also got new brackets yesterday. These are gonna be our base plates. Our older ones were a little bit off as far as the dimensions go, so JC killed it on these as usual. Made some new base plates for the front and the rear of the truck. We got our coilovers all situated. We're gonna go ahead and put our bearings into the end links right here. Start putting the front end together. Now the front was tacked on. We ended up using just like a metal base plate because the machine parts weren't in yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock all this off, get all that cut out of the way. We're gonna finalize our ride height, put the coilover in, and see where our new actual base lands on our new plate. Back end's looking nice and fresh. Did all our modifications for the push rod. You can see it's nice and bronze again. Truck's gonna be like a phoenix rising from the ashes. So we're gonna go ahead and knock out this front end first and then we'll get the back end all situated and hopefully we can get this thing on the ground. Kyle, do you like the push rod suspension? Very pushy and very roddy. But does it work? That's the question. <laughs> does anything here work? <laughs> Thanks for the optimism, Kyle. So we got it all welded up, got it bolted in, got the shims in. Let's see if it moves. So as the wheel comes up, guys, it's gonna be pushing this push rod up. The rocker should be rocking and the spring should be springing. Those are all very technical terms in case you're wondering. Look at that articulation. Look at the articulation. Look at it. Oh, yeah. Oh, what? We got full compression. Everything's moving through the range of motion pretty good. The weight of the truck in the corner right now is on that spring. So we're good to go. I'm going to leave it at that right now. And we're going to go ahead and move to the rear, get those in. And then I'll be able to get the truck on the ground, set the ride height, make sure everything's good with our rocker arms, make sure there's no binding issues anywhere. All right, back end is all set, guys. We have everything bolted in. It's looking pretty stinking awesome. Only left to do now is we're gonna put the wheels on it, throw this thing back on the ground, and set our ride height, make sure everything's good, and then we should be able to make this, let this thing rip. Ooh. All right, guys, we are on the ground, and the push rod suspension is push rodding. What do you think, Andrew? I think it's looking great. Seems like it's functioning well so far. So what we were looking for when we dropped the front end and back end of the truck guys was our actual compression of the spring. Right now we are not killing these springs. These things are definitely going to be 
size to what we need for the weight of the vehicle, but whether or not how stiff it is and how stiff the ride is will be determined once we actually drive it. So in the back, we have some rebound that we can dial in here. We have more adjustment back here. What we're looking for is four inches on all four corners on the battery pack, because we don't want it too low to the ground, otherwise we're gonna have issues with the battery pack kind of bottoming out. The bottom of this truck is completely flat, so if the bottom bottoms out, you're gonna lose traction on all four tires, and it'll actually almost like hydroplane. Last thing we have to check is I want to check the scrub radius of the front knuckles to make sure that our half shafts aren't hitting the push rods. This actual uh, half shaft moves that way and inward. So we just want to double check, make sure it's not going to hit, and then we're good to go for our test drive. So Andrew, go ahead and fire up that pump. Let's see what this thing does. All right, right there, come back. Cool, so it goes down to about a quarter inch, guys. We're good to go there. promised she'd be on the ground on this episode and there she is she's out in the wild it's all on the ground we still haven't set up the final alignment yet so i know our toe is all crazy in the back and the front i'm not really too sure about either so we still need a little bit of fine adjustment with the alignment but as far as everything with our suspension truck's ready to be on the ground and and driving oh look at that she's bouncing bounce shawty bounce the seat height's good but our steering column angle is not good i mean it's not going to be difficult but we'll have to do a lot to make the angle change because we just have to move the hole upwards oh. to get it more is this ever angle. gonna end please somebody stop this yeah well yeah. do it right the first time words of wisdom Anzer said next time we build an electric all-wheel drive race truck we should do it right the first time so i'm gonna make a note of that i think the only thing left to do is take a spin man she's definitely looking good nice and low I would say I would come take a ride with you, but looks like there's missing a seat here, so. You sit on the floor. I'm just gonna follow behind. No... You sit on the floor. I don't wanna sit on the floor. I'm 45. like our fiberglass dash against the roll cage. That's what all that creaking is. Let's see if we can race this F-type Jaguar right here. What's up? <laughs> I can't rev him. I can't rev out, bro, but I will definitely drag race you. <laughs> We just came back from our test drive and the suspension is working awesome. I'd say 95% better than it was previously. Man, we went through the whoop section that we have out here. That's what I call it. It's so bumpy. It handled the bumps, train tracks, everything. Real smooth. We just need to get the alignment dialed in. You heard Chris from Zero EV talk about front wheel burnouts, rear wheel burnouts. Right now we still have open differentials in both the front and the rear motor. So we were contemplating putting a Miller LSD. It means a MIG welder. We're trying to track down some uh, Quaif LSDs to put in the front and the rear of this truck so we can get full traction in both wheels. And give you that all wheel burnout we've been talking about for a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this guy's dying for that. I think we all want to see it. So we, a couple more small things and we'll be 100% with the truck. But it's been a year in the making for this truck and we still have a little bit way to go, but <clears throat> we've made leaps and bounds from, I would say version one. I know everybody's been waiting to see this truck perform and it will. So 
keep your eyes peeled. We're gonna be dropping some more content on the EVC 10. So stay tuned and you guys will see smoke everywhere. <laughs> Got it, bud. Bye bye. It's Friday. It's pizza day, baby. What do you think? About pizza? It's awesome. Push rod suspension, not your stupid pizza. You had some too, don't call it stupid. Ah, oh, shit, that is perfect. That's Andrew's serious face. <laughs> the man flew all the way from the UK with a, a little box. <laughs> Who are you? Wiring, wiring, wiring. Um, I don't know if Kyle wants to maybe add a little diagram, flash a diagram for a calculation. See, <laughs> si, senor. Nice. We got jokes here on Monday morning. 